Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right. Now, before you attack Does me. anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ. You're watching the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And today I have a special video sponsored by Dragon Shield Sleeves. Dragon Shield has these new Justice League sleeves out and this is the Superman sleeve. And so today I'm gonna be doing a deck tech that's centered around Superman. It's a fun Vorthos deck. So how did I brainstorm a Superman themed deck? Well, I went to Magic's own Superman Gideon. Now, if I'm going to make a Gideon themed deck, do I need to have Gideon himself leading it? Like Kytheon, the one drop. I, honestly, I don't think so. Kytheon is like Smallville Gideon, and I don't want that. I kind of want actually Clark Kent leading this deck. I'm going to have Dejiro with eyes wide open. Dejiro with eyes wide open is three white white for a 4-3 vigilant legendary human warrior. When Dejiro with eyes wide open enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planeswalker card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. If a source would deal damage to a planeswalker you control, prevent one of that damage. So we're putting together a mono white planeswalker deck specifically centered around Gideon and a little bit of Superman theme. This deck is being pulled in a bunch of different directions. Is it Superman theme? Is it Gideon theme? Is it a planeswalker deck? You're going to find that there's a lot more overlap than you think. So we're going to focus on some Superman cards, some Gideon cards, some planeswalker synergies and some planeswalker support to make this deck really work. Let's talk about the front man of magic, the Superman of our format, Gideon. You know, the Gatewatch is kind of like the Justice League. It's not very subtle. Uh, everyone's trying to put together these teams of heroes. And so if I'm making a Superman deck, sort of a Justice League deck, then I want Gideons in there and tons of them. Uh, Gideon of the Trials synergizes with Planeswalker decks, especially Gideon Tribal decks, because all I have to do is zero this and I can't die unless they kill all my Gideons. And this deck is chock full of them. Gideon Ally of Zendikar produces tokens. You know, there's not going to be a lot of creatures in this deck, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to create a bunch of creatures. And 2-2 two -two Knights aren't very relevant in our format, but they are very relevant at blocking incoming attacks towards our Planeswalkers. And then Gideon Jura, just a classic Gideon, the original. You can tick it up to protect all of your Planeswalkers. So we have a lot of these Gideons being able to turn into big beaters and deal damage, but also provide levels of protection for us because that's kind of what we're going for. Planeswalkers aren't the best in our format because it's multiplayer. So we play a Planeswalker, and instead of one opponent being able to attack your Planeswalker, we have three. Ugh. <laughs> we also have really big, evasive, powerful creatures that are able to come in and smash your Planeswalker. So we need a lot of protection, a lot of redundancy. This is a slow and methodical deck, and so we're going to be paying attention to that strategy. Let's look at a few more Planeswalkers. Gideon Blackblade is Gideon-based removal. Take it up a few times and then bam, exile target non-land permanent. We can also take out a permanent with Ugin the Ineffable. Again, creates dudes and then boom, blow some stuff up. Ugin is actually very good in this deck, very good in commander in general. And then finally we have Karn Liberated, just down tick, exile something, it's removal that we're looking for. It's really sad that Ugin the Ineffable is really, really good for our format and it's really cheap too. It's, you know, only a couple dollars. And Karn Liberated is so expensive, it's like 30 bucks, but we do kind of need a critical mass of removal and the ultimate of Karn is, uh, is uh, pretty fun. Some other Planeswalkers that synergize with Planeswalkers, a Johnny Steadfast. This downtick to put a counter on all of your dudes can be really good if we're flooding the board with chump blockers, like with that Elspeth Sun's Champion I've got next to it. But also, adding a loyalty counter to each Planeswalker is crazy. We're gonna want to sort of build up these loyalty counters so it's really difficult to assail our Planeswalkers. A Johnny Steadfast is just a solid card in this deck. I mentioned Elspeth 
Wrath's chump ability with those three soldiers, but also it's a board wipe. Down ticking to kill all the big things is exactly what we want to be doing. And then the Wanderer seems like it might actually be a little bit underwhelming. You know, I don't know, an uncommon planeswalker here? No, no, no. The Wanderer is really solid. There's a lot of new spells that just deal damages to creatures and planeswalkers. I think Hour of Devastation is actually a really, really strong card. It does five damage to each non bolus planeswalker in each creature. I've seen that take out Super Friends decks. And so I want to be able to, you know, get around those effects by having the protection of the Wanderer. And then also having a little bit of exile based removal on there too is really strong. All right, so far we've been talking a lot about Gideon, but this is a Superman themed deck. Let's talk about how these all line up and give us some Superman flavor. Well, Superman is powered by our yellow sun. And so there's nothing more powerful than having two suns. <laughs> Approach of the second sun. If you get to two suns, man, Superman is going to be so powerful, he's going to win the game. Just, just flat out win the game. You know, Superman is so strong. In fact, that's probably my biggest gripe with Superman is that like, oh, he's like just as flat, fast as the Flash, and kind of. Well, some people would argue about that. You know, he's super strong. He shoots lasers out of his eyes. He could look at anything and just melt it instantly. Uh, he's powerful enough to turn back time by flying around the world backwards. Okay, this is the superhero we're talking about here. Of course, you know, this power can also be seen in our hero Gideon. We have Gideon's intervention. It seems like Superman is always getting the way, always saving people, and so is Gideon. Actually, I've only seen Gideon and Superman both try and like punch like laser beams from their evil opponents. I'm also going to be running a full complement of snow-covered planes. This is to represent Superman's Fortress of Solitude. I also like that this combos nicely with extra planar lens, meaning that your snow-covered planes can tap for two while your opponent's normal planes just tap for one. Dragon Shield sponsored this video, but they're also sponsoring a deck building contest over on tappedout.net. If you want to win all of these Justice League slaves and $100 to Cool Stuff Inc. and store credit, then head on over to tappedout.net. There'll be a link down in the description where you can try your hand at building your very own Superman themed deck. Go in a completely different direction. Make my deck better. Do whatever you want. Because in three weeks, we're going to be choosing the winner of that deck to win sleeves and gift cards to Cool Stuff Inc. You know, you know, buy commander cards and sleeve them up in awesome sleeves. So check out that contest because it's really cool. You know, uh, Superman has always taken an oath to protect, and Gideon has taken similar oaths as well. Actually, Oath of Gideon is one of the only legendary enchantments that synergizes so well with mass planeswalkers. Uh, dudes, two core allies to chump block, solid, you know, and each planeswalker you control enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it. Yeah, that could be really good. Ticking up to those ultimates, giving us a little bit more room to absorb damage from our opponents. Uh, Oath of Gideon is really solid. And of course, the oath that uh, Superman takes is... Yes, I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. So we got the sword of truth and justice right here. <laughs> Superman traditionally does not have like weapons or swords or anything. It's like all the fist, you know, uh, but that's why I kind of compromised a little bit because Gideon has got to have his sword. So I got sort of through truth and justice in there. I'm also going to throw in black blade reforged because Gideon wielding that black blade is pretty, pretty cool. But actually, uh, Superman did originally talk about like truth, justice in the American way. But a couple years ago on like the 900th uh, uh, special comic, the man of steel renouncing his US citizenship. He was gonna fight for the world. Uh, so I've got renounce the guilds in here, not only because it's a, you know, funny little flavor thing, but also this is surprisingly good in mono white decks. And I wanted to call it out. Uh, one in a white for an instant, each player sacrifices a multicolored permanent. Now, this could be a total whiff in your playgroup, but the most popular decks out there 
are multicolored decks. And I've played this against people that are used to slamming in a Trax on turn four or ramping out their Gitrog monster, you know? Uh, so I think that this could be a good card in your playgroup. And it's really great when you get like a three for one uh, against your opponents. You know, Superman is also incredibly self-sacrificing. You know, he's always putting himself in harm's way, sacrificing himself. And the comics have had Superman die a couple of times. And of course, we had to have our Superman die too. Gideon had to sacrifice his life. We have Gideon's sacrifice stepping in. And so instead of Liliana dying, Gideon's like, no, me instead. And so we have this martyr of Gideon here. So let's talk about the deck and how we support Planeswalkers, because it's cool that we got all these Superman themes in there. It's actually really funny that so many of them overlap with a really strong commander deck, but we got to support our Planeswalkers and win the game too. Okay, one thing that we want to do is prevent our opponents from attacking our Planeswalkers so we can get lots and lots of value with them. A lot of these Gideons, if they just make a 2-2 Knight, that's not enough value. We need to make like five 2-2 two Knights to have it really be worth the card. So we need to keep these Planeswalkers around so we can activate them multiple times. Taxing your opponent's ability to attack us and our Planeswalkers is really good, but you have to pay attention to them. Cards like Ghostly Prison don't work. They're templated in an old way that just says they're taxed if they attack the player, not the Planeswalker. If you look at newer versions like Norn's Annex or Archangel of Tides, you can see that it can't attack you or a Planeswalker you control unless they pay that amount. We can also find some other ways to protect our Planeswalkers. Peacekeeper is one of the best to keep our opponents from just attacking at all. Peacekeeper is two and a white for a 1-1, Peacekeeper. <laughs> I'm sure they changed the creature type on that one. Uh, it's got an upkeep, okay? It's just two mana, but just like creatures can't attack. Just imagine a Planeswalker deck where creatures can't attack. You're just like, oh, okay. I'll just like keep activating my Planeswalkers over and over again. Peacekeeper is such an insane effect. Uh, it's on the reserve list, but it's only like $5.50. So if you think you want this effect, I'd pick one up because reserve list cards are crazy. And a lot of times, you know, you hear people talking about a reserve list card and it's $50. So finding one at $5.50 is pretty cool. Uh, also, this effect is usually way more expensive. Uh, magic is okay with this being a nine mana effect. Blazing Archon, you know, creatures can't attack you. Granted, that's better than just creatures can't attack, but nine mana is a lot for keeping your, your opponent's creatures away from you. Okay, uh, I also like Mystic Barrier. This is another cheap card, you know, so if you're talking about a couple cents to protect you, you play Mystic Barrier and then you can choose which direction players attack. And so if someone next to you literally has nothing worth attacking, you're just like, all right, you can attack me. And then suddenly the other two opponents at the table can't get at your Planeswalkers. Remember how I said Planeswalkers are vulnerable because you have three opponents that can attack your walkers. Well, if you only have one, then they're just as good as in 1v1, and Planeswalkers in 1v1 are exceptional. And then finally, we have one turn of protection to Fairy's protection. Still, still expensive, ugh. But, uh, you know, we had a reprint for it in the Mystery Booster, and we had a, a Judge reprint of it, but really, it's just still so expensive. So don't feel like you need Teferi's Protection. But we're going to talk about ways to sort of tick up the loyalty on our Planeswalkers, and if you can play a spell that basically says, whoop, I'm out of here, all my Planeswalkers are protected, and then you have another opportunity to tick them up again, it's pretty strong. Okay, one way to make sure your Planeswalkers don't get attacked don't have any creatures on the battlefield. Uh, Wrath of God, Martial Coup, you know, we got the four mana Wrath all the way up to the seven, eight, nine, ten mana Wrath. Uh, Martial Coup is pretty good because it creates blockers, and so that can be really strong. Wrath of God is good because you can play the Wrath and then deploy something immediately afterwards. But I gotta say, the one I'm most excited about is Urza's Ruinous Blast. You know, if there was a card that was Superman, it would be Urza's Ruinous Blast. Like, he is so powerful that he would just go and destroy, like, everything. Uh, exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. So you keep all of your Planeswalkers. 
Of course, you have to jump through a few hoops being a legendary sorcery, but you're going to have a Planeswalker on the battlefield. This is Planeswalker Tribal. Uh, granted, you don't get to hit your opponent's opposing commanders, so this isn't the slam dunk in our format as much as it is in others, but it's still quite good. One weakness that White has that we're going to talk about a little bit is card advantage. You know, we don't draw cards very well in Mono White. And one way that we can sort of get some card advantage is utilizing the graveyard. Uh, one thing that really stinks, though, is that one of the best Gideon cards, and a really strong card in its own right, is Rest in Peace. It just says, nope to your graveyards. So I think that this is a meta call. If you're playing this deck in a meta where people are abusing their graveyards and your graveyard value just can't keep up, psh, exile those graveyards, get rid of them, you know, have everyone playing on a level playing field, you know. If you don't want Rest in Peace, then you can play cards like Brought Back and Elspeth Conquers Death. Brought Back is really cool because it returns target permanent cards, you know, in your graveyard that were put there this turn. So if your opponents swing out and kill your Planeswalkers, you're like, uh, two mana Brought Back, and they come back with that loyalty. It's really cool. Um, this is another cool way to ramp to if you have fetch lands in white, you can just t sack a few fetch lands and then immediately bring those fetch lands back onto the battlefield. Elspeth Conquers Death is a really fun spell because it's got some removal and recursion sort of built into each other. And then one other way to support Planeswalkers is to bolster their loyalty. Uh, Grateful Apparition is a thrumming bird. You get to fly in and poke someone and then boom, proliferate all of your Planeswalkers. It's very cool. Of course, you got some lands that do that too. Karn's Bastion proliferates everything. The new Nesting Grounds lets you like move counters around. And so with these effects, you can easily, sneakily get up to an ultimate. And ultimates are very attainable in this deck because we have so many levels of protections, your opponents are just going to get frustrated. They're going to think that you can handle you and then you board wipe. They think they can handle you and you peacekeeper or you Teferi's protection or you activate nesting grounds and then suddenly you've ultimated a planeswalker. I've described a little bit of the play style, but let's talk about it from the beginning to the end. The beginning of this game, we want to make sure to hit our land drops. Get forms of land-based card advantage, land tax, verge rangers, and thematic compass. None of this is actual ramp. They don't actually put extra lands on the battlefield, but they are card draw because lands are cards. You get three lands in your hand with land tax, you've drawn three cards. Thematic compass is also really cool because when you flip it, that is ramp. <laughs> It's rampant like eight mana. I mean, come on. But when you flip it, you get Spires of Arazka. And that is really good because you need to protect your Planeswalkers. And so being able to Maze of Ith one of them is pretty, pretty good. All right. So you need your card advantage. You need actual ramp now. Cards like Solemn Simulacrum, worse Solemn Simulacrum in Core Cartographer are actually really good. They get lands on the battlefield, but also they're chump blockers. Protect those Planeswalkers. Uh, Astral Cornucopia is actually a pretty good piece of ramp too, because if we have incidental proliferate, we could proliferate the Astral Cornucopia to be a meaningful mana rock rather than three mana make one white. Blech. Okay, so we have a lot of the early game shored up. Don't be afraid to sort of board wipe before you have Planeswalker presence. You know, you could austere command or cleansing Nova everything away and then immediately try to land your commander or land a Planeswalker when the board is a little bit clearer. You do have a critical mass of these uh, wipe effects. And then Dejiro can provide some level of protection, but then you go for some cards, man. You play a Gideon or an Elspeth or a Sarah Benevolent. All of these affect the battlefield. They put dudes on the battlefield and that can affect the board and really stabilize you in weird situations. One thing is though, is that these are not close out the game planeswalkers. Like the Gideon turns into a Gideon or makes an Anthem. It's not a big win the game ultimate. You know, Elspeth as ultimate is gaining five life. I know, right? So instead, you start searching for those Planeswalkers that do win you the game. The ones where you tick up to an ultimate, you say, boom, all of you guys are done with. Gideon, champion of justice, his ultimate is exile all other permanent. Oh no, all other permanents. Do we, want, do we want to be that? <laughs> do we want to be that person? Do we want to ultimate Gideon and exile everything? Do we want to restart a Karn? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. 
We could also just go in Ultimate Gideon and just play more and more Planeswalkers, activate them more and more times, and just bury our opponents in card advantage. All right. I hope you enjoyed this Superman Gideon Planeswalker themed video. I mean, this deck is really, really fun, and I hope you give it a try. I also want to thank Dragon Shield for supporting this channel, sponsoring this video. They have awesome sleeves. If you're a fan of Superman, you're going to really like these sleeves. You're also going to like them because they're Dragon Shield sleeves. In my opinion, they make the best sleeves out there. I sleeve all my decks in them and they're incredibly strong. Just look at reviews online. Look at Tolarian Community College who reviews products. So I'm really proud that they sponsor the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. They want to give away a bunch of these sleeves and $100 to Cool Stuff Inc. They ran this competition last month with Aquaman. I made an Aquaman deck tech and challenged you to make Aquaman decks and put them on tappedout.net. And you guys did it, and now I have the winner of $100 to Cool Stuff Inc. and a bunch of Dragon Shield sleeves. It is Drinkable Seawater with their deck Reclaim the Throne. They spent a lot of time talking about Aquaman's story arc, and it turned out to be a really fun deck. I also have a runner-up. Uh, they're not going to win the full prize, but I'm going to send them something special. Uh, it's Bony Pony with their Aquaman meets SpongeBob SquarePants. First line, I made a deck with Aquaman, so because Aquaman is also in Spongebob, I combined them both, and then proceeded to list almost every single card and how it relates to Spongebob. Just a big old thumbs up, and you have to win something, so thank you to the participants, and I hope you guys all try to make Superman deck techs on tappedout.net and win sleeves and win money to Cool Stuff Inc. They're also a sponsor of the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel, and you can find things like this on Cool Stuff Inc. There'll be links in the description. Uh, I also want to thank my patrons because they don't just sponsor a video. You know, they sponsor every video. They sponsor everything that we do. They are the true heroes of this channel. Thank you so much, patrons. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You know why Dejiro's eyes are wide open, right? Because he's like looking up in the sky and seeing if it's a bird or it's a plane. He's like, no, 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 that's Superman.